Are you ready for the heavyweight championship of the world? Are you ready? Hey, welcome to Animus Corner, bringing you another episode of Unanimous Decision. And today, who are we talking to, Bill? Hey, you heard what he said, Unanimous Decision. That's our exclusive interview series. And today, like I always say, we got a good one. These guys hail from Brooklyn, New York, and they brought us the Monster Smashes. Let me be the one. They covered Ribbon in the Sky, and they gave us that bedroom song, Come Inside. Today, we have none other than the R&B group intro. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! All right, welcome to Animus Corner. Today, we got some history in the building. Uh, we got uh, intro, so we're going to talk. Y'all ready to step into the ring, fellas? We're, we're, and in this corner, <laughs> they, yes, you sir. guys, you, you guys sound ready. Uh, for, uh, first and foremost, we definitely want to thank you for being here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start. Well, actually, introduce us. Well, introduce yourselves to the audience, fellas. Um, and uh, um, I, I do want to point out this is like I could tell y'all really brothers for real, for real, because this is like the mm -hmm. first time we've had a group in the same room during the interview. So that actually mm -hmm. speaks volume. Of uh, y'all getting together, so go ahead and introduce yourselves one by okay, one, fellas. Working. We get this album done. I'm, <laughs> I'm Jeff, and uh, uh, my name's Buddy. That, at least that's what my family calls me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, and, um, Buddy and Jeff, like, all right. So when it comes to uh, you guys, actually, it seems like there's a lot of camaraderie between you guys. So, um, how long has the group known each other? Like, growing up, was it something that was assembled last minute? Or um, were you guys created in a lab through executives, or did you guys grow up together? <laughs> Man, that's a great question right there. Let me put my phone on mute. Jeff, we you got, we probably got, answer it. Yeah, too. I think we got a funny story because I think when, when me and Buddy first met each other, we both was like, yo, you look familiar. Like, we mm -hmm. both felt like, because we grew up kind of like in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But we didn't, we don't remember that far back, but we probably rode bikes together. Like during, mm -hmm. like, with, mm -hmm. like junior, I'm thinking like, during junior high school years, like I re I knew Jeff because when I met him, it wasn't like meeting a new person, like mm -hmm. somebody that I never met before. I got that type mm -hmm. of memory. I'm like, I know, dude. I know you. Like, Yo, what's <laughs> up? You know. And um, with Kenny, Kenny was um in the army down at Fort Bragg. Um, oh. met him down there, and um, now nah, the label didn't put us together. We just had we the three of us had a passion for music. And he, once, he taking the, the, the shortcut. Tell the story. You was in the military. OK, OK. Yeah, and <laughs> I went, him and Kenny was in the military together. I was yeah. in Fort Bragg in the Army. And one of my friends, Kenny uh, Thomas from Lufkin, Texas, said, I know this guy named Kenny that can sing real good. I told him, you know how to play the piano. I didn't know how to play the piano that good. But he said, I told him, you know how to play the piano. I want you guys <laughs> to get together. So we got together and started um, working on some music and stuff like that. And um, fate had it. That my guy Peekaboo was like, yo, my dude is putting a group together too. Why don't y'all come together and mm -hmm. make something happen? And um, I met Jeff, and from day one, day one, just it just kept going. It just ended up being just one long day. Like mm -hmm. it's still day one from meeting him because um, we started working there, and Kenny moved to New York and uh rehearsal every single day not even knowing what we was rehearsing for not even knowing what we was getting ready for we was just sitting mm -hmm. in mother's Spot backyard every day mm -hmm. every day rehearsal yeah like we was training for the olympics but only vocally and you guys uh grew up in brooklyn correct i grew up in brooklyn and i grew up in queens jeff grew up in queens, queens. okay yep. okay brooklyn, I queens. to come to queens to look at the girls because queens got a lot <laughs> that's why they call them queens <laughs> That's why they call them queens. I'm telling that's, you. That's why. Yeah, that's what it was. Coming to America. <laughs> Coming to America. Right? Brooklyn. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's so you, that, that's the that's the main reason Hakeem went there and uh, coming to yeah, America. He wanted to find a, queen, uh, find find a queen. little place suitable for a queen. Mm -hmm. so, so so coming up, growing growing up and coming up as a at a as an adolescent, growing into your teenage years, what was the music scene like for let's say R and B in New York? Uh, man, coming up as an adolescent, New Edition definitely had my 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 eyes and ears like yeah. okay. New Edition, yeah. uh, Forcing D's mm. friend of the show and Guy yeah. later on Guy yeah. Day, 
it was it was it was amazing to see how it was all forming together. It's mm-hmm. almost like James Ingram, James Ingram, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buddies. Ooh, love James Ingram. Yeah, rest in peace, James. But Ingram. To, 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 to be honest, though, I don't even know how to say it. But it's like we we felt something was happening, mm-hmm. but we couldn't explain it. Yeah, we, we were still hooked up. We were still hooked into hip hop, this new music that had just came out. Even though we started listening to R&B, we both from the church. His mom's a pastor. My yeah. dad's a, a preacher. So they would hide music from us. They hid R&B music from us. So it's like when you hide something from a kid and when they get a hold to it, they just go crazy. Yes. Yep. That's what I think that's what happened with the both of us, because the first R&B music that I was allowed to listen to was um, the barge because they had the gospel music. Yes. I used to play it in my room and they would hear it. But they were like, oh, that's gospel. He ain't listening to no rap or no r and yeah. They never said nothing about the barge. That's when I started listening to R&B music. And then it just progressed into, like you say, like Guy, um, Diana Ross and Lionel Richie snuck one on them with Endless Love. My parents Ooh. did that was an R&B record. I, I ended up buying the, the record, the 12 inch record of that. I snuck it in my room. It was easier. It probably would have been easier to sneak in a porno movie to my room than an R&B. <laughs> they didn't want me to have no parts of R&B music. They just wanted me to be gospel, gospel, gospel. So those are mine. Well, so th- we'll speak. Hold on. Sorry, Barry. Uh, no, since I- he, st- he, since he said it, you know how I am. Uh, yeah. Since you, you mentioned gospel, who, who are some of the gospel artists that you guys grew up listening to? Uh, I definitely grew up listening to the Clark Sisters, uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, um, mm-hmm. uh, Andre Crouch. Oh, forget Ooh. about Yes, sir. Uh, Mississippi Mass Choir. It just went Love on. Uh, Hawkins. The Hawkins. Hawkins family. Oh. No, forget about it. Tremaine Hawkins. All of yeah. them was dope. Oh, yeah. Walter. All of them. All of them. So, <laughs> so how, how does a preacher's kid and another, you know, fellow uh, musicians that were uh, raised in the church end up in front of a heavy D and a DJ Eddie F, you know, for an opportunity for a record deal. And then also w- mentioning those names, was Uptown Records ever considered? Because you said you guys, Guy was a huge influence. Was Uptown Records mm. ever considered before you guys decided it's, it's to go funny, with that I, I definitely, I was, it's funny because I was talking about this. I was talking about this earlier today with somebody. Um, Uptown, first of all, Uptown Records, shout out to Andre Harrell, rest in peace. Great yeah. mentor. He hung out many a days with us, with us in the studio, giving us, mostly giving us advice mm-hmm. on women, how they, how the women would be coming at us and how we mm. should deal with he them. He had a saying too. He had, he had a saying that we can't say so on here. Should... <laughs> what they going to do for you? What they going to do for you? <laughs> <laughs> make a nigga rich, suck a nigga, make a nigga rich. What they going to do for you, huh? What they going to do? And we listen to him. We'd be right at Eddie F's house listening to Andre. Rest in peace to him. Hev introduced us to Eddie. But how we got how we got in that spot right there without going all through it, it was um, we was hanging out. We was actually in the studio. Uh-huh. And I said, uh, yo, y'all want to go to this club called Reds? I was like, we didn't always, know. Me and Kenny I was, didn't know. I was a socialite. Like, I was always out in the clubs. I said, mm-hmm. yo, it was a warm summer night. Mm-hmm. And I said, yo, let's go to this club called the Red Zone. They was like, what's that? I said, trust me. <laughs> it's a lot of chicks. Know it's the Red Zone. <laughs> so, first time I went to a club in New York, we were performing here. <laughs> That's how tight my family was. The first time oh, wow. I went to a club in New York, intro was performing. I was rebellious. <laughs> but go ahead. Tell okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I end up, uh, I was always getting into the clubs free. So when we rolled up, I said, yo, let's go. We ain't had to wait online. They just let us right in. Yep. And then I said, yo, y'all want to go to VIP? At that time, VIP was a real VIP, separate yeah. from the club. It was in another room and so forth. So it was like, we can't go. I said, trust me. We just went upstairs. They, they didn't stop us or nothing. It was there. And it was a real VIP where just Andre Harrell and Heavy D leaned on the bar talking. And Buddy noticed uh, Heavy. He said, oh, shit, Heavy D. Excuse me. Oh, shoot. Heavy D. Mm-hmm. So we approached him. And we asked Hev, can we sing for him? Mm-hmm. In so the bathroom. Happened. We wanted to sing for him in the bathroom first. Just, just so happened, yeah. That, that Temptation. We, we, had, we had been rehearsing his song. We was just we was using Peaceful Journey from Joe to see and Heavy D as a rehearsal song for us. You know, you're on my mind and I wish you Peaceful Journey. Brother, hope you hear me. Mm-hmm. And that whole week, this is before the intro album, right? So mind you, we all just want to be artists that's trying to make it. So we we driving out to Jodeci's house in Teaneck, New Jersey, Devante, 
Dalvin, JoJo, Ooh. and KC there. We playing basketball with them. X sandwich. It, it, we, they, all we had was a scooter. <laughs> I, had, I, had a, I had a white Volkswagen Jetta, and Jodeci had a scooter that Andre had brought for them. And amongst the amongst Jodeci and intro, all we had enough money for was to send JoJo on a scooter to get some eggs. Yep. And JoJo came back with some eggs, and KC cooked us some egg salad sandwiches. Mm. He's on the piano. Kenny Savante actually was says, writing a song for us. Yeah, I don't, don't want to fall, fall in love, love with no stranger. stranger. Mm-hmm. This new, like intro and Jodeci yeah. actually did a song together, but we never got the chance to go into the studio and record it. And truth be wow. told, Andre, not Andre, um, uh-huh. uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Devante wanted us. Story. Devante wanted us to sign to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? Record, he was going too long, and we end up meeting Hev. Yeah. Yep. While they went on to that's that was the week. The next week. We went out and that's when we met uh Heavy D at the red zone. So y'all that's y'all crazy. were kind of y'all were kind of already familiar with the Uptown family through Jodeci prior to even meeting Heavy D. We were we were familiar with Jodeci because as soon as we met um yeah. Well the roller yeah. rink. We met them at the roller rink in Jersey first. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. We had Actually. and what's crazy is we had already spoke to Eddie F. Mm-hmm. Hold on a sec. This is kind of crazy. You got to help me out. <laughs> because <laughs> going down memory lane. Before we met Jodeci or we met Jodeci we met before Jodeci first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we met Jodeci and that, that same week we ended up meeting Mary Blige. Yeah. Like as soon as we met, because as soon as we met Eddie, he told us to come to his house. Mm-hmm. When we got to his house, Mary was there in the living room and she, she was, uh, I'm like, Hey, how you doing? She's just, you know, this chick on the couch. She's like, you can say shit. You know, she's just so <laughs> fly. Like she had that same, that same Mary J. Blonde. She was there, there. So yeah. I was like, what's going on? She's like, nah, it's all good. And I'm like, that's just this girl. I don't know who she was. And like, well, you guys here, y'all gonna be working with her. And now, you know, she's the queen of hip hop soul. So yeah, like, yeah. You know, Speak, so, so we um we uh heavy D, I, I've seen his name a lot mentioned, mm-hmm. mentioned with RB. R&B acts and Dorothy artists. Hill, Mark Morales, Intro, um, uh, Monifa. Because shout out to um, DJ Eddie F. DJ Eddie F was a hip hop producer, but he had a lot of R&B in his in his production. Mm-hmm. So okay, a lot of R- a lot of Heavy D tracks was really R&B tracks with Heavy D rapping on them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Did you guys um, once once Intro started to find its groove you guys got your niche together getting getting everything um i guess layered and so forth did you did you start to pattern your style after anyone absolutely not uh, we were ourselves and i believe that even the way we yeah. structured our harmonies no one else yeah. sounded like us we was mm-hmm. odd we was we was we was grabbing harmonies from our grandmothers like my grandmother <laughs> used to like a gospel, <laughs> a gospel hymn would come on and she would mm-hmm. always add this odd note to it <laughs> like it didn't really go with the song yeah but when we would rehearse we would take things that really didn't that really wasn't like correct musically correct or we would use notes yeah it wasn't traditional harmonies or nothing like that we sung some off notes to make the harmonies thicker. We just yeah. had like a whole different style as far as going in and um, producing our vocals. We spent more time producing our vocals than we did on the tracks. And the Untouchables producers allowed us that opportunity to do so because they were so dope that we was like, oh shit, let's just get on our vocals. Yeah. We don't gotta worry yeah. about doing tracks no more. Cause I mean, prior to that, we was doing our own music and stuff like that. When we met the Untouchables, they kind of like made life a lot easier. Shout out to those dudes. It sounds like when, oh, sorry, Barry. It sounds like um, if you were um, singing, just adding certain notes that kind of didn't go where it's supposed to, that's, that's I'm a jazz guy. Thelonious Monk, that's what he did all the time. Ah, okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what was that? What was it? Monk. Thelonious Monk. Okay, yeah. He's, yeah. He plays okay. off, yeah. off beat, he played, that's, Sounds that that's what I instantly thought of Kenny as you were telling the story. Too. Yep, Kenny loved. Oh yeah, that's my guy. That's my favorite yeah. pianist. Yeah, and, and, um, yeah, my favorite. And uh, speaking and, of, and, and me and Jeff was. I'm sorry. I'm here. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Barry. Go ahead. I'll no, I, I so um well actually you brought up Kenny. I I do want to um and you said you guys were already making your own material. Things got easier when you got with the Untouchables, but before your debut album, so one of the members, Kenny had already written 
for uh, Mary J. Blige uh, singles uh, and uh, no, Love No Limit and uh, Reminisce. Was there, was there after her album Crazy. goes and those two tracks are recognized on the album, was there any thoughts from the label or amongst the group that you guys need to be producing or writing more of your own material? Yeah. And um, also you said Reminisce, my love, my oh, she, it was three. Yeah, you it was three. Reminisce What's the third love, one? Love No Limit, and you don't have to worry on that. Who's the soundtrack? soundtrack. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. we were recording our album, and we were around all of these phenomenal artists. They were popping on the studio. Father MC would come in one day, Heavy D would come in one day, Sean Head would pop in, Super Cat would pop in, mm-hmm. Mary. Um, who else? Janae. Um, um, from uh, who who lived with us in the crib? Who, but who's who lived oh. with us in the studio? You forgetting? I'm about to tell him who lived with us in the studio Puffy. while I was recording. Not just Puffy, but who else? Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones. Wow. Donnell Jones. Really? Puffy, we all like it was called the Mini Mansion, and Eddie had his studio, Mini Mansion Studio, in that mansion. And in that mansion, you got Intro, you got Puff Daddy in the loft, you got Donnell Jones like in the rooms, and we all just vibing off of each other creating this that's crazy new genre of music mm-hmm. you know it all mm-hmm. pretty, it was like the modern day motown like the like the house of hits yeah mm-hmm. the house of hits um but it was just in Clarkston, new jersey as opposed to detroit michigan shout out to dj eddie f man he's brilliant brilliant guy mm-hmm. yeah. I and mean, we, we we had a chance to interview some other uh some of your your new york neighbors uh we we, we were able to get stevie d of uh, force and D's. That's my guy. Uh, we got um we we interviewed uh solo uh oh, riff. Although they, they're in New Jersey, but you my know guys, they're right they're, there. They're, they're still out guys. When we they're see each other yeah. shows is is always love and excitement. And when we see each other backstage, a lot of artists we always say, you know what, we say we family, but you slap five backstage and then you go on your way. You don't hear each other from each other again until you see a show again. But yeah. we always try to stay in touch with everybody. Yeah. We but, we choose our we choose our music friends like we choose our fruit because it's kind of like a cutthroat business. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. got some nice apples and oranges in our basket, and we just nurture them. You know, <laughs> it's not many though. Is but uh, shout out the to ones that are there shout stuck. Out, shout yeah. out to Mr. Cheek. Shout out to Changing Faces and Cut Clothes and Donnell and oh, wow. Kate. Yeah, we stay in touch with all these people. Yeah. So it, 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 the the it, they. Those groups that I just named, along with you guys, they have there's a common 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 feature amongst all of them, which is harmony. You don't hear that with a lot of groups, but you definitely hear that with some of the groups. Um, that was this was that the same for you guys? Was that something that you guys made had made sure that you wanted to make sure you perfected? We didn't know we were perfecting it. We didn't even know it was going to become a '90s R&B genre. We just listened to Commission. Mm. We was just writing songs, was playing chords on the piano, writing on top of it, putting three-part harmonies. And then you got to think about it. Two to three years later, we found out that it was okay what we was doing two to three years in the past. And, and, and we, just, back- we just didn't record and the album comes out the next day. You put you record the music and then you pretty much sitting around for like six months like, do you right. think it's gonna happen? Or what's it gonna happen? Like we, you know, you gotta, gotta gotta go back also. Uh-huh. When we were starting recording our album, Josie album was done already. Yep. Done. So the if first, you know, the first one? The first one, yeah, forever my lady. The okay. album was done already. Buddy, buddy, buddy. I'm not, I'm not gonna play, I'm not gonna play. The album was done already, and we started off singing off of raw hip hop beats with some core structures around it. Okay. But notice that certain people went back and remixed their records to get that same feel. Mm-hmm. But if you really think about it, we were, we didn't do the whole New Jack Swing feel. We did New York raw hip hop samples right out the gate and threw chords around it and sung on top of that. So and like, then that, you yeah. know, a year or two yeah. later, everybody else started following. Yeah. Because if, if I'm thinking about Let Me Be the One, it is, it gives you that. It, it, it is, that, that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's a love thing. It, Slow down from Grand Nubians. Slow down. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. That's the love thing. Yeah. And I, I, I know you guys said that you didn't know that you were uh, at the time you didn't know you were perfecting. Crazy. You were you were you were creating something that was in its essence perfection. It was you get you have to wait six months and then uh, like about a year later you get that confirmation. Oh, whatever we did in the studio about a year ago is hitting. 
And it hit in a way of three singles on your debut album, charted on Billboard R&B, and Come Inside hits Hot 100 at 33. <laughs> so that, that's and that's well, a that debut album, boy. you know. So we're not gonna like uh, poo poo that. That's extremely difficult to do when you have three singles that chart. So what were your expect uh, expectations for the follow up project? Great question. Great I think question. that can I just mention one thing? Man, you can mention whatever you want. <laughs> we really, yeah, want, brother. <laughs> we really wanted "Don't Leave Me" to be the next single. Mm-hmm. That was like a hidden jewel. If "Don't Leave Me" from the first album. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the radio just gravitated to Ribbon in the Sky and the label just at that point it was like you know it's, it's time for you guys to get back in the studio blah, blah, blah. but we was like we hope oh, we, we wanted video. to drag that first album out but yeah. there was no chem- there was no like contingency plan at the record label to for the album to have that many singles on it because at that time people would release an album and they would hope to have two good singles to mm-hmm. cap the album mm-hmm. the problem with the intro album and I'm an intro fan the problem with the intro album <laughs> that these guys put together, like you can, I can listen to it from the beginning to the end. Like I'm cleaning my house. I'm like, which one, which single would I pick next? And when I listen to those guys, I'm like, don't leave me should have definitely been a single that they should have released. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I tell them all the time if they would have gone back and released it. So in September, uh, don't leave me will hopefully be, the spearhead for our 30th anniversary vinyl LP, which is going to be released in September. Okay. 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 So jumping the gun, but check out. We love it. If you if you listening to this interview and you've listened to intro songs, come inside. Jeff in the studio making love to the girl at the end of the record. Everybody, <laughs> it's fake, but it's real. It's, it's the real deal. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it was a real deal, real deal. Four, four or five o'clock in the morning, I wake up and the, the, it's dark. Oh, wow. The studio, <laughs> I had the engineers in there. <laughs> Jeff's in the vocal booth getting it on. And they recorded the whole thing. And, and they, I think they put like about three or four minutes in it. I They couldn't use me because it would have been shorter than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, oh, man. Don't leave me. Don't leave me is that joint. Yeah. Okay. So and, that's your and, favorite on the uh, follow up. On the follow up, yeah. What do we oh, expect? No, no. Well, Kenny's dad had passed away, mm-hmm. so we knew it. Party time was kind of coming to a halt. The yeah. label was yeah. on us to turn over the album, but we can't do. We had a love thing. Let me be, mm, 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 because he's grieving, and he's grieving. Yeah. as a songwriter. You already know what's about to come. I was mm-hmm. expecting more of a gospel album. But he did sneak in like the My Love's On The Way. He was respectful to the intro fans. Strung out. Strung out feels like mm-hmm. the first time. But the rest of that album is dedicated to Mr. Kaiser, de- dedicated yeah. to Kenny's father. And we wow. knew that. We had to give him a space to do that. And I, I was fine yeah. with it. Jeff was fine with it, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's what brothers do. Oh, yeah. 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 And we, we were respectful to, to follow up with a really dope album. But, you know, unfortunately, things took a turn. But mm-hmm. we actually, we, how many songs were recorded? We got tons of songs. Do you want me to play something? Yeah, from the set, from That's the third album. album. If, oh, if they want it. <laughs> oh no, no, we'll, hey. we'll send it in. Hey. We'll send it in. We'll okay, send, we'll fill it in. Yeah, we got yeah, it. We'll right? Fill it in. And send, yeah, send us an MP3 file, and we'll like uh, uh stitch it with a clip. Oh, okay. Yeah, for the video. Yeah. Go ahead. Bro. Um. So, not not everyone can cover a Stevie Wonder song. Stevie Wonder is royalty. He is. Man, I, we can't say enough about him, right? Um, Jodeci did well, in my opinion, with Lately. He did a and phenomenal song. Phenomenal cover. Phenomenal cover. They did yeah. well. Um, and you guys recorded Ribbon in the Sky, which is, I would probably say, my top three Stevie songs of all time. It's my favorite. His rendition, just yeah. amazing, amazing, right? Did you guys, and, and I love how you are what we call r and b it. You made it R&B. You made it 90s R&B. Thank if you. you hear Ribbon in the Sky by intro, it is 90s R&B. Um, did you guys get, after it was finished, after it was mixed, recorded, everything, what was Stevie's take on it? Um, Stevie loved it. So we were in LA. Um, well, actually, Stevie didn't really get it. His, his stamp on it until after we did the video, right? Right. Yeah, he hadn't heard it. Once it, 
I'm sh- he may have heard it. He may have heard it, but he didn't somebody may have mentioned it to him. But it was when we was in L.A. shooting the, the music video that he reached out. He got in touch with us. He found um, Jeff and Kenny at the Lamontros Hotel. I had flew back to New York that night. And I remember so, as soon so as I too, walked right? in the house, yeah, my mother was like, um, Kenny said, give him a call at the hotel. It's very important. So I called Kenny and he's like, yo, you shouldn't have went home today. We're going to go meet Stevie Wonder tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He wants to meet us. So I checked the flights. It was a, another red eye leaving from JFK back to LA. I, I kissed my mother, grabbed the same bag, and just went right back to the airport. And I got back to the to the hotel in the morning. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. James Cleveland's son Andre came and picked us up at the hotel and took us out to meet Stevie. And it was a uh, it was wait, dope. Wait. Time time out time out time out time out. Time out. Uh, you talking about D James Cleveland? Yeah, I yeah, know yeah. he's gonna bring it out. The Reverend James Cleveland. I'm, I'm sorry. The Reverend. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, son, he just threw that in there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. That's lie. I can't let that slide. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. You you go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all right. You know, his son Andre was very good friends. Or I'm still, you know, is very good friends with Stevie. Yep. And uh, okay. Stevie found out we were in LA. He said, "Oh, oh no, no, you got to bring them over to the studio." Uh, RJ came and got us, and we all got there. And we honestly, we was on our best behavior probably ever. Like, we were like, we were so thirsty, man. Like we wanted to bring out, you know, take pictures. And you guys yeah. are on your best behavior. I was on my best behavior. I was on some secret squirrel stuff because I had a camcorder, <laughs> and I was TV one to playing air hockey with Jeff. He was busting my tail. He was beating the heck out of Jeff on like, air hockey on the table. And I'm like, I got to get this on tape. I have <laughs> to find that tape. I have the tape of Stevie Wonder playing air hockey with Jeff. Wow. Real short time because they told us no cameras. But I'm, okay. cool, I'm hard headed at that time. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. And, you know, and I, and I got a little bit of it. But uh, that was tough. That was the best time of my life. Stevie. Um, so basically it was Kenny's birthday at the time when we got there yep. that day. And, uh, that's a one. That's a bit. That's a wonderful birthday present. Oh, yeah. Stevie ordered a cake. Yeah, he's like, let me invite some friends over. So we just chilling. Let's see who we invite over. Mm-hmm. And he walks Terrence Trent Darby, Johnny oh. Gill. I'm like, who's next? You know, <laughs> <laughs> where the honey's at? <laughs> <laughs> but These little, guys are cool, but know, okay. little do we know, Stevie had already planned something already. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, he was recording a record called what's I'm up? the One Who Loves You. Yeah, what's our brother that died? Uh, Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield passed away uh, mm-hmm. here in New York at Coney Island during the uh, okay. storm. What happened okay. was uh, a pole fell and it hit him and paralyzed him. He eventually yep. passed away. Yep. Um, so Stevie Wonder did a, uh, a compilation album. Yeah, it was different. It was actually produced by artists. Eric Clapton. That's our only project with Eric Clapton. Yeah. And Stevie Wonder. And Stevie Wonder. Besides the ribbon writing. So uh, Stevie said, you know, later in the day, I want you guys to do a song. He was like, oh, shoot, what? And I was like, well, we're going to do a song with him, but I'll be in the vocal booth. Probably Kenny going to come in and help me out with the parts or whatever. <laughs> wasn't no vocal booth, B. It was Mike's in a circle. It, Mike's in a circle. And guess who's standing? <laughs> guess who's standing next to Stevie? Who? I said, oh, my God. If I hit one wrong, wrong, wrong note, it's a wrap. You going to hear it. <laughs> Yeah. Thing, and, and that scary. was that, that that's all last minute like y'all just pull up to the studio like, and it's yeah, just, yeah, we didn't know. no i was johnny gill didn't know church and darby didn't know we didn't so know. all organic no, like yeah crazy. it's on an album called all men are brothers produced by eric clapton it's all a, men are brothers okay all men are brothers yep so um do you as as we're talking i'm picturing the people that you're saying and i'm picturing the Claptons and the Trent, you know, the Darbys and the Johnny Gills. And mm-hmm. do you ever get taken back and say, man, boy, I can't, I really live this life. <laughs> I'm really a part of. I this. think about, I think about a lot of stuff. Even before that, we was at this old timers um, awards dinner and I'll sit at the table with Buddy Guy. Yep, um, yep. Y'all sit at the table with Lou Rawls. Who else I was at the table with? You All the old um, dudes. I'm eating. Lou Rawl, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> hold up. But Lou Rawl <laughs> sitting next to me, and he was like, he was like, you cats, yo, y'all all over the place. In my day, we we toured the whole West Coast, then we toured the mid, and then we toured the east. Y'all at the east and the west and the mid. Mm-hmm. But bro, when I found out he died, my heart yeah. fell to the floor. The mm-hmm. nicest guy Same ever. Same thing with uh, Barry White. He's like, yeah. yeah. He says, it's all in the cards, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's all in the cards. <laughs> 
We met some really cool people. Yeah, I mean, it was at the Backstage American Music Awards. And um, Prince, this guy, man, everywhere he would go that day, he just would run. It's like he wouldn't walk yeah. anywhere. He was like, shy. To, from every room to his cell check. It got disrespectful, though, because some artists started laughing passes. at him, bro. Yeah, he, Remember? They would start so laughing at him. He right. goes running past us, and, and mm. I wasn't going to say nothing. And Kenny just says, what's up, Prince? And Prince just kept running. And he said, he said, we intro. And Prince stopped. And I was like, oh, shit. He was like, all right. All right. Yo, what's up, brothers? Yo, I like y'all stuff. And I'm like, yo, this is Prince. Like, that's a that's a that's a big seal of approval right there. Dude, well, hell to I was like, what just happened? Like, but but so like, listen, like Barry just said, listen, Prince, Stevie, Barry, Lou Rawls. Mm-hmm. Hey, nobody can't. Uh, it, if it would have been me, man, I would have. Y'all can't tell me nothing. <laughs> y'all can't tell me nothing. Dude, and even, uh, this music, this intro, I don't even know if we've had this com this candid of interview. In the past, we never, years. We this is went, a dope interview. I we never went this deep. Barry and Bill, man, I appreciate you guys for no sharing problem. your phone with us. Thank you. But I'll Thank tell you, you something about intro. This thing has put us in some crazy places. He'll tell you about some places overseas. I'll tell you about Patty LaBelle's kitchen, sitting in, standing in Patty LaBelle's kitchen <laughs> while she's cooking and just talking with her. Yeah. Like, how, did, how the hell am I in Patty LaBelle's kitchen just because I'm in intro? And she's cooking. She got the swimming pool from her kitchen. She has a, a, a door that goes down to her swimming pool and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, who the hell is that? I just walked in. Wait a minute. That's that's uh, the boxing guy. That's Thomas Hart. Yeah. What's he doing here? It's just amazing. So, um, t- so you mentioned in, um, I, I want to stick to the males for a little bit. Like when you mentioned um, you're at a table with Lou Rawls, Barry White. Obviously, there's some legacy there when you look at R&B, specifically mm-hmm. focusing on groups. Mm-hmm. One of the R&B groups uh, your bandmate wrote for was 98 Degrees. So mm-hmm. as a viewer, when I was younger, it did seem like there was a lot of Black male R&B groups in the 90s, but oh, that yeah. wave got commandeered by white acts. Mm-hmm. And then it ultimately, R&B groups in general disappeared. Did you ever feel like there was an agenda behind the scenes to either erase male groups or replace black acts with white groups. Jeff has an answer. I got a call. Shout out to Mookie. My dude, Jonathan Morant. I hope you see this video. Shout out. Sense of validation because this story is going to sound like a flat out lie. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Go Mookie ahead, Joe. Me up. He's like, yo, I got these kids. They're coming to New York. They released some music overseas, but um, I'm going to be in the studio with them. I want you to come over. It's, it's some white guys. And we're going to do some R&B music with them. I'm like, okay. So I go to the studio. It's like five white guys in there. And I walk in and all of them got on do-rags. <laughs> Everybody got on do-rags. And they partying and stuff like that. And the parties is going on. It's New York City. It's studio time. If you got, if you, if you block studio in New York, say for a week, your first day is a party. And then the second day you get to work, you work day two, three, four. And then like later on, it winds down and you just leave the engineers in there so i just Mm -hmm. ended up on these dudes on day one there's no writing it's just partying and get to know each other and i'll leave and i tell them like dude i can't do it man i can't can't. it's not it's not r&b dude that's not Mm. backstreet boys Mm-hmm. Ended up mm-hmm. being the goddamn Backstreet Boys. I could have had a song written on the first album. Yeah, I think they, they ended up calling full. They called full force right after. I could, I couldn't feed into it. I just yeah. myself. I couldn't. I couldn't. I my talent couldn't project into it to make myself go back to the studio another day. I'm mm-hmm. not into commercial commercial music. Mm-hmm. I'm into like you know it's soul, it's R and B, rhythm and blues. Shout out to the Backstreet Boys and the. 50 million records that they sold. <laughs> <laughs> so so speaking of that, did you ever feel like there was like a maybe an agenda from the labels to kind of push replace black acts with white acts or or replace R&B groups in general? No, it's not about replacing. It's all about copying because it, mm-hmm. it happened way before our time. You yeah. Remember, the 50s and 60s were traditional. Yeah, they were right. known to do that. Like they'll mm-hmm. take, you know, you have a, a what's his name? Little Richard. Mm-hmm. Do whatever, and then next thing you know, Elvis Presley's doing Little Richard songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a common thing. So yeah, yeah. for them to replace, I wouldn't say replace, but for them to eat off the same plate, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's okay. definitely. Yeah. There's always when there's opportunity, there's gonna be there's gonna be moves because you like you gotta think about like you got the um, Jackson Five, you got the Jets, you got the Silvers, you got um, 
just it just it just goes on and on. And we we go back in reverse too. We did a Bobby Caldwell song on our second album, What You Wanna Do for Love. Mm-hmm. So you know, okay. for me, music is just it's colorless, but you know, there are culture vultures out there, and you know, time will tell. You know, they can't mm-hmm. you can't fake the funk, as they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, intro was one of the I'm a 90s guy, that whole era. Like I said, I graduated in 93. So that whole 90s era, I was understanding the music, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, I know as far as intro, Silk, uh, uh, H-Town, the list list goes on and on. Tony, Tony, Tony. Yep. Tony, Tony, Tony. Man, (laughs) I mean, we could keep Tony, Tony, Tony. Uh, You you don't run out of time. uh, I won't run out of time. Shy. Your portrait, Shy. Poisonman, Jodeci. After Seven. After, after Seven. LaVert, we going to go on for days. Mm-hmm. It was so many mm-hmm. R&B male groups, but everybody, all those guys. They, they all had their own lane. Yeah. Everybody had their own lane. Um, I said this before, H-Town didn't sound like Silk. Silk didn't sound like Mint Condition. Mint Condition didn't sound like Intro. Intro didn't sound like whoever else, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but what made intro stand out from your peers? I can tell you, if you look at the writing or, 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 or listen to the way we did our stuff, it wasn't the traditional slow jams. It wasn't a traditional feel of what most people are doing in R&B, especially in the Southern areas of the country. Uh, if you listen to the way the music was like that, we didn't, what is that? It's going it's to go into your questioning. It's going to go into the answer. <laughs> so we, we just definitely did things differently, not on purpose, but the way our mind was. Okay. That's it. So we just okay. have our chemistry. But um yeah the way we the way we structured our sound, we were just being us. We were being us. We wasn't trying to sound like some of the records that we grew up on we wasn't trying to sound like <clears throat> what everybody else was doing with their ballads. If you listen okay. to our ballads, it's totally different. Yep. Any other kind of ballads that you hear out there. So yeah, that's interesting. Got you. And if you had to, um, you know, s- sit aside, you're, you have this thing called the Mount Rushmore. And if you, if you're standing in front of that Mount Rushmore and you're looking mm-hmm. and you say, we'll, we'll, we'll you, you know, we have BC and AD. So we're, we're going to say A N E. So after New Edition, we'll use New Edition as that timeline to start from. Yeah. You got four groups you're going to put on your Mount Rushmore. Four groups, male no groups. solo artists. No solo, no solo artists. artists, just no your solo, four, just four. Let's four say four groups? male, four, yeah. four male RB groups. Who, who would go on that? That's kind of easy. You got Voice the Men, you got Joe C. you got Guy. Well, was he after New Edition? Yep. Yes, guys yep. after New Edition. And it's going to be one more. Um, here we go. Because, you know, I'm holding that spot for intro, but I can't put us there. <laughs> yeah. You say, yeah. I'm <laughs> no, holding that spot for us, but it's so many people okay. that can fit in there. <laughs> yes. You could, be, you could fit H-Town in there. You could fit High Five in there. You could fit um, we'll just Coke that, in there. You can we'll put New Edition there. Put New Edition there. You could fit the um, guys from LA who you went to Japan with. Uh, troop, troop. You could fit I, them. I knew he was gonna say troop. Our guys, That's our guys. Boys. Yeah, our guys. So, so if we say okay, new edition would be on there, right? And then you just use your other three. So that would be your, your, four, your four, I guess, right? So oh, guy, you, are we driving? Guy you put guy on there. What? Them. What did? How much did guy mean to New York? Guy. Change the game. Let's let's talk about this for a second. Yeah. Let's 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 give them their flowers, the vase, the water, and everything. If you look at the structure what Teddy Valley did with Guy, mm-hmm. it brought showmanship. It brought a new sound. Mm-hmm. It actually had feel to their music. Yeah, it mm-hmm. actually made you feel a way when you listen to Guy. You felt like he was in that room at that party. Mm-hmm. You felt like you was dancing on that girl when mm-hmm. you saw her in the video. Yep. Guy changed the game, bro. They made they made R and B music cool. Yeah, and I can tell you the influence that guy had on intros music. They have a song called "Tease Me, Baby." Tease me tonight. Tease me mm-hmm. tonight, girl. Mm-hmm. I feel alright. And Aaron said, "Um, 
Turn the lights down low, baby, please come close. He said, I want to come inside. Let me bring you joy. I said, what the, he said? He said, I want to come inside. Did he say that on the record? Y'all put that on the record too. Nobody made a big deal out of it. Nobody made a big deal out of it. So as it's time to record the album. Y'all put it on the record too. Come inside. Hey, let's use that big blast right there. And then now you got intro come inside. And that's the rotation of music. And let me tell you something about, I'm, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say that because when you listen to intro, Don't Leave Me, Atlantic didn't release Don't Leave Me as a single. So Blackstreet said, Don't Leave Me, Girl. Mm -hmm. They recycled mm -hmm. it and it became one of their biggest songs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's all about recycling and grabbing from each other. It's like wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, watched, I was watching a, a podcast today uh, I saw a clip of it and someone and the guy said, it's not what you say it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. So right. he's, he, he, he used, uh, he used a, a song that he used was Whitney Houston's saving all my love. And they were going through it, going through the song, you know, you had it. Uh, mm -hmm. And he asked, he, it was two people who he was talking to and he said, okay, well, what was he, what was she talking about? And one, I guess one of the people was a songwriter. So she said what she said. The guy said, he asked the guy, uh, he said what he said. He said, you're wrong. She was a side chick. She just Robin, said it Robin. a certain Robin. way. Robin, oh, shoot. I never knew that. She was talking about Robin. Okay. Yeah, that's what I said. It, I'm saving. Saving. You have your family. Saving it. Just saving yeah, it. You have your. So yeah. when I, that, that made me think about when you said, when you talked about uh, Aaron Hall and the common side and everything. Yeah, the beginning of "Peace of My Love." I was just singing a song. I didn't really think about the the lyrics too much, the meanings. But when he said, "You can't have all of me because I'm not totally free." Yeah. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> we not. You can't. You know. You gotta be on that side. So that made me think about it when you when you mentioned the common side. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing how? Lyrics and songs speak real life issues, mm -hmm. real life situations. Those mm -hmm. lyrics are speaking real life situations. No and that's why people yeah. connect to certain songs because it's speaking to their life. It's the soundtrack to my childhood. I, I, I can say that for me. Um, Absolutely. So obviously um, we see the studio and the <laughs> plaques in the back. And um, it's, it's glad yes, to see you guys are still out here making new music. Fellas. Ooh, Where okay. can people find out what's coming up next uh, for intro? Well, we're gonna the five. We're gonna go against our um our plan, is, which was to stay off the road the entire summer and just work on the 30th anniversary album. Mm -hmm. But we're getting some dates in, so we're gonna hit the road for a little bit, starting um April 15th, and we'll stay out for maybe like two weeks, and then we're gonna be right back down here preparing ourselves for the um. The 30th anniversary. In other words, spot dates. Spot dates, yeah. We, we, we can't okay. commit to those 90 stores and we stuff. We can't right commit now. to long term stuff right um, shows and tours because okay. we have um, the project on the table. Um, mm -hmm. And also, uh, after the 30th anniversary album, we're going to work on new music, you know, to release as well. Yeah. Okay. We with a, a super duper producer out of Los Angeles, Saeed, what's his mm -hmm. name, Jeff? Saeed um, Renard. Yeah, he knows his last name. I know yeah. the first name. He was on the voice and stuff. <laughs> He's been helping us out with some from amazing some, guy, amazing yeah, okay, songwriting and stuff. Yeah. And then, what's the best social media to uh, keep up with the spot dates and the uh, new we're, music? We're all over the place with our social media. We got like yeah. four or five different Instagrams, which is the label has already said you guys got to narrow it down and stuff like that. We'll fix but, it. Yeah, we just we just I got I got like, intro music. <laughs> 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 Anything with intro music, R and B, that's gonna be us. Or all right, cool. Cool. Even our fans have taken over pages now and they got Kenny Green pages and, <laughs> pages and we just let it go. We just let it go. But yeah. no, you'll see our names yeah. connected to it. Yeah. Yeah. Music, and Jeff Sand, yep. Jeff, Jeff Sand is not yeah, I, I, I just want to uh, thank you guys for responding to, uh, you know, my message because I'm like, man, I, I just I just remember, man, listening at the coming side and the let me be the one and all, ribbon in the sky and the videos and everything. I'm like, I got to get these guys on our platform or, you know, and uh, RIP to, to Kenny, man, because he he had a phenomenal voice. One of the, uh, the most distinct voices that I can remember um, 
in R and B, just like Dino from H Town. Just yeah. you guys had just distinct voices that you can just pick out. Can he just out the crowd? I think that's how he won, and that's how he became. That's how that's how he fell into his voice. He talked the same way that he sung. If you listen to him talk, he mm-hmm. talked like he sung. He never tried to become a singer. He just did what was in his heart. Oh wow. Um, gone way too, yeah. way too young. Passed away at thirty, yes. same age as Jesus. Thirty-two. Yeah. yeah. Yep. R.I.P. Wow. So definitely uh, want to give you guys your flowers. Uh, thank you guys for giving the world such great music. Thank you guys for being a part of my my up upbringing, my nineties. I loved it. I I couldn't ask for a better decade to be maybe the seventies to to really engulf all that music. Even the eighties, because I mean I was able to get the Thriller album and all that. So uh, definitely the 90s. So that's my favorite era of music. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. Same, that 90s. Same here. And uh, um, fellas, we appreciate y'all time um, for joining Thank us. You. And I know um, that's one thing me and Bill always try to do is uh, introduce our crowd to uh, music that we grew up on. Um, they bought up some uh, incredible names today. I heard Cut <laughs> Man, Close. We're going to go after some of those names. Donnell Jones. So, hey, Bill, when it comes to folks that we probably need to uh, bring in the ring uh, to interview, mm-hmm. how can fans give us, uh, you know, their feedback on who we should be interviewing? Yeah, our fans, they know, go to the comment section. We call that my two cents and leave you two cents. Hey, any questions for uh, our, our guys here, Intro, Brett, Buddy, and Jeff? Leave questions and we'll get those questions to them or the video will be out. Hopefully, guys, watch that video and they'll be able to answer the video, the uh, questions that they have themselves. All right. And then, um, Bill, what's another uh, thing that the fans could do to show support? Hey, follow the channel, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, leave a comment. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. And, uh, other than that, that's all we got. Everybody say peace. 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 Gary and Bill, we appreciate you guys, man. Peace. Appreciate peace. you. Yes, sir. Peace.